It's live, I-E-L-T-S class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Central Europe. I'm originally, of course, Canadian, a West Coast Canadian. And uh, in this class, we are focusing on the task to writing essay. Uh, this is quite similar for academic and general students, so it's a valuable class for both of those groups. And again, as usual, these lessons are brought to you by our world-class premium online learning websites for academic version of the test. Check us out at aehelp.com. And for those of you studying for the general exam, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Now, this class is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. In fact, I recommend watching to make sure that you learn lots. To become a member of our channel, just click the join button besides the subscribe button on the channel page. Hi, Igul. Hi, Zainab. Good to see our members in class on time. Uh, I will quickly show you our websites while we wait for some more of our members to join in. Hi, Barendra. There's one more. Uh, this is our academic uh, IELTS website here. Click that big red button to join the premium package. Of course, once you do that, you will have a My Student account. You can log in at the top on your phone, tablet, PC. You get a tour of the package. And then, of course, you have all of these goodies to get you prepared for the test. Uh, Computer-based practice exams, full online interactive course, paper-based exams, lesson videos over 100 hours, uh, a dozen CDs, and much, much more. Uh, for the general version of the exam, visit us here at gieltshelp.com and click that big red button there to get the premium package. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, Sheng Hung. Good to see you. Um, Yvonne is asking, is it possible that an answer cannot be found in the text and you need to come up with it yourself? Um, Yvonne, there are question types in the listening and reading called inferred answers where you may need to come up with it uh, from your own uh, thoughts based on what you have read. Um, inferred uh, questions for the reading, Yvonne, are usually multiple choice, so you choose from a set. But there can be. They're called inferred question types. Okay? It's a good question. All right. So um, for those of you who haven't yet, download our app, Academic IELTS Help, from your app store. And if you have questions, send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. After this class, we will have a listening session where everybody can join the chat. That's in about 90 minutes. Now let's take a look at our task two question. Okay, first step, as you know, members, is to read the question carefully. So let's do that together. You should take about 40 minutes to complete this task. Uh, and then let's read. Many jobs that were done by people are now done by machines and computers. Some people believe that this is a positive development, while others feel this is a negative for society. Discuss both views and give your own opinion. Use examples and explanations from your own knowledge and experience. All right, so interesting question. This is one where we have to talk about both positions and, of course, choose one. Um, what is the voice of this essay, members? So is it first person or is it third person? Again, we never write second person, so no you. Okay, the only place where you will see second person voice is task one on the general IELTS exam when you're writing a letter. Okay, otherwise in task one and two for the academic, you have to use third person for task one and either first or third person. So Roshni says this should be third person. 
Yes, Barendra, at the end of the month, we'll have the app for the general version. I'll let you know for sure. We'll send out emails, okay? Uh, Shang Hung says third person. Yeah, Yvonne says, guys, it's first person because it's asking for your opinion. Um, absolutely. This one clearly defines first person voice. Uh, pay careful attention. It says discuss both views and give your own opinion. It's very emphasized when it says your own opinion. So it's my opinion, in my opinion. Um, and it also says use examples and explanations from your own knowledge and experience. So twice you see the word own come up here, I would definitely choose first person voice uh, for this essay. Even the question is very subjective. So um, work done by machines and computers, which was previously done by humans, whether that's good or bad is a very subjective concept. So absolutely a first person voice uh, would work well here. I agree. Uh, Jatane and uh, Yvonne. So good for picking up on that. All right. Um, what is the topic? What are we talking about here? So let's go through our steps of critical thinking. Let's plan out this essay. Never ever start writing an essay without planning. That's foolish. Okay. So let's plan it out. Planning, of course, requires... Um, you to identify the topic first and then the controlling ideas. Okay, so in this case, what is the topic? Uh, Roshni says jobs replace machines. I think what you're trying to express, Roshni, is machines replace human jobs. Okay, um, Shang Hung says the topic here is automation. Okay, Jatane says the topic here is machines. Preeti says machines and computers. Um, okay, let me uh, try to help you a little bit with this. What is the subject of this sentence? So as you know, every complete sentence in English and most languages must have a subject, verb, object. Uh, in this first sentence, many jobs that were done by people are now done by uh, machines and computers, okay? What's the subject in this sentence? So, uh, correctly, Sheng Hung and Ai Gul says that it's jobs many jobs. The jobs are the subject of the sentence, right? Work is the subject. Okay, um, good. Anish, Lakira, um, nice. Congratulations. 7.5. That's a fantastic overall band score. Um, that is the band score that many native speakers would get if they were to sit the exam without preparation. So you should be proud of yourself. Congrats, Anish. Very good. Okay, um, so yeah, jobs, okay? Now, in most cases, that will also be the topic, okay? So uh, jobs that were done by people are now done by machines. So the topic here is jobs. We're talking specifically about jobs in this case, right? So if you're having trouble identifying the topic, uh, identify the subject, verb, object of the sentence, and most of the time, the subject will be the topic because it's the subject of your discussion okay so All right, so jobs. Okay, what are jobs? So let's, um, let's go through this. Anish, thank you for coming back and sharing your score with the rest of the group. It helps to encourage students, so good for you. I'm, I'm really glad that we were uh, a part of your success and that encourages me to work and teach and help others 
like yourself. All right, um, so let's, uh, let's focus here, members. Let's focus here. So what is a job? Ooh, that's a, that's a good question, right? So what do we consider to be a job? Maybe some of you had difficulty identifying the uh, topic here as well because we skipped the paraphrasing. So we didn't paraphrase first this time. We just identified the topic. So Roshni says it's a company paying a person. Uh, paying a person for what, Roshni? So what, what is the company paying the person for? Okay. These are important thoughts. And thinking about these, by the way, students, members, will not only help you in your writing task, but will also help you for many of the speaking questions because these are the generic, general, grand ideas that a lot of the exam and university topics focus on. So Igul says a job is a kind of activity that demands thinking or physical work. Yeah, that's part of it for sure, Igul. So Igul says it's a, an activity that demands thinking and or physical work. Sure. Let's see. There's another concept. So Preeti says people take money for their skills. Yeah, sure. So an activity that demands thinking and or physical work as well as in exchange for money. Otherwise, it could be a hobby. It could be a sport, right? So what makes a job a job is that we're not just thinking and doing a lot of physical work because we could do that for our hobbies or our sports as well. Um, but we get some money for it. Now, there is still one piece missing here. Uh, we're exchanging our th thoughts or our um, thinking and our physical work as well as what? And I'm trying to see if anybody's mentioned that one missing element. So Yvonne's saying, for example, T-shirts in factory. Um, skills is okay. Skills is a part of your thinking and a part of your physical work. Uh, there's another point here, Roshni, that I really want you to identify. Shang Hung says services. What is one of the four dimensions of man? Ah, there we go. Preeti, very good. Time, right? We exchange time for money. The most uh, simple definition of a job is exchanging a person's time for money. That is the most basic definition. Time and energy for money. That's right, Zaina. Very good. So if you're ever asked again, what is the definition of work? The most simple definition you can give is an exchange of time and energy for money or some form of monetary compensation. Okay, uh, why do we do it? So why do we need jobs? What's the purpose of having a job? And you might think it's silly to go through these uh, in such a rudimentary, basic format. However, it's exactly this kind of identification and thinking that will boost your ability in communication and hence your band scores as well. Um, so Yvonne says to feed ourselves. Um, that's okay, Yvonne. That's one part of it. Another would be to shelter ourselves, right? Create a roof or put a roof over our heads and clothes on our back. Um, so what, what would those be called, Yvonne, is in one kind of a concept? Igul says to earn a salary. Barendra says so that we can uh, fill our needs and create a better life. 
Yeah, okay, so we need jobs to earn money which people can exchange for. The word that you're looking for, Yvonne, is sustenance needs. Okay, sustenance, sustenance needs, that means uh, our um, basics for survival. So food, warmth, um, shelter, those are our basic sustenance needs, okay? So we earn money, which we can exchange for sustenance needs, as well as fulfill our wants, right? So ideally, uh, we're not just buying what we need, but we can afford our wants as well, going on trips and so on. Now, how do we do it? That's a simple one. How do we do jobs? We gain skills that are needed and exchange them for money, right? So, learn to be a software programmer and work for Microsoft. Okay, let's say, for instance. Okay, um, so uh, what's the controlling idea then? So now we have clarity on job, what is a job, why we need jobs, or why we do jobs, and how we do jobs. Uh, what's the controlling idea? Okay, so let's take it the next step. Let's identify the controlling idea. Give me the controlling idea in a short statement or sentence as concisely as possible. Remember, concise means that using as few of words as possible to express your idea. So try to concisely express the controlling idea in this question. I'll bring up the question one more time to give you a a bit of help here. So what is the most concise way to summarize the controlling idea of this question? Okay, the faster, the more accurate you become at doing this, the easier the exam will be, the easier college will be, the easier university will be, the easier your work might be in the future depending on what you're doing um, because these are the fundamentals of expressing clear coherent concepts. So, Shang Hung says, machines and computers replacing people's skills. Uh, Shang Hung says, automation. Okay, uh, very good. So, automation, Shang Hung, is much more concise than machines and computers replacing humans in the workplace. So, yes. You're on the right track, Shang Hung. I think there's a little bit missing there. Uh, machines replace people. Some ascertain their positive impacts, while others not. Roshni, that's a little bit wordy. I think you can do that a little bit more concisely, but you're on the right track. So, how about that? The benefits and deficits of work automation, okay? So that's, I think, one of the simplest ways to uh, summarize that question, right? Yvonne says, is it good or bad that humans work replaced by machines? Yeah, it's not bad, Yvonne. It's a little bit grammatically off, but you're being concise and that's good, okay? So the benefits and deficits of work automation. All right, that's a, that's a pretty good way to do it. Um, what is work automation? Let's ask that question. Okay. So I think the obvious answer that a lot of you are thinking of right now as well, Adrian, as you said, it's machines and computers replacing people in their jobs. Um, 
Now, let's take the jobs one step further. Uh, what kind of jobs? So when we talk about jobs, there's a couple different main categories of work. Where are uh, computers and machines replacing humans? In what industries? I'm trying to get you to think about this without giving you too much information. Uh, visualize the specific here. So this is where that strategy that I've explained to you before, where you think of some key examples and then think of the general uh, concept will help you to come up with some really good ideas for your essay. So Roshni says producing food and medicine. So um, product uh, or goods production. Yep, yeah, I agree. So let's, uh, let's summarize that Roshni a little bit more. So replacing people in their jobs, which means producing goods like medicines um, and so on. Okay, Barendra says architecture. Uh, can you be a little bit more general, Barendra? So you're thinking right. You're thinking correctly about the specific topic here. So what would be the more general place? Uh, one visualization you might have are all of the telephone services that are now being replaced by computers. You call the bank and it's not a person that picks up the phone, but a computer and says, if you would like to get a loan, click one. If you would like to troubleshoot your credit card, click two. Okay, so what is that? So yeah, so Shang Hyung, they're being cashiers now, they're being buildings, bank workers. <laughs> Okay, I go all good. So what you're thinking of here, students, is services. So computers are not only replacing production jobs, but also service jobs, right? That's what's interesting. So computers, machines are replacing humans at both the service level and at the production level, which is very interesting. Okay, good. All right, um, why? Why is this happening? So give me some reasons here. What's the reason? Why are all these jobs being replaced by computers? Okay, so it's cheaper. Yeah, so increasing uh, the profits of companies. So cheaper, faster. Okay, so we have some overlap. Igul says people are lazy and want comfort. Okay. Uh, convenient then maybe, Igul. It's the word we're looking for. Okay, Shang Hung says easy to manage. Yeah, I agree, Shang Hung. Um, management of humans can be very tricky. Uh, so... Managing machines is a lot simpler uh, than humans. Uh, Preeti says accuracy, and that's arguable as well. Computers are much more accurate uh, for certain jobs these days than humans ever could be. So that's definitely a valid point these days, Preeti. So we have uh, cheaper, faster, convenient, easy management, accuracy. Okay. Roshni says, even works on holidays, so they don't take breaks. Yeah, so continuous labor. Absolutely. Okay. Sign up says, a lot of demands, so quick production, right? That, I think, is a part of faster. Okay, uh, good. So, uh, can you give me some examples? So how can we see these? So how can we see these? How can we see this cheaper, faster, convenient? You might as well think of a couple examples before you start writing because perhaps you will think of one 
that um, you can use in your essay for both of your paragraphs, right? Uh, Chabi, very good. Chabi says ATMs. Does everybody know what ATMs means? It means automatic teller machine because it's a bank teller, okay, that does the services. So ATMs are automatic teller machines, yeah? Absolutely, I agree. Any other example? Uh, GPS, global positioning systems? Um, yeah, somewhat. I think that's a little bit tricky one, Chabi, to get in there. Okay, uh, Shang Hung says, uh, there used to be a ticket man at the parking lots, now it's a machine. Okay, Shang Hung, make sure that you come up with an idea that you can express with the accurate vocabulary. What you're think thinking of, there's a parking meter. Okay. Okay, parking meters are those machines that you give money to. Uh, a lot of times these days, Shang Hung, it's even replaced by software, so we don't even have parking meters anymore, but we just actually pay for parking on our phone with a number. So, uh, Preeti says, wafers, machines, produce. I'm not exactly sure what that is, Preeti, but perhaps, okay. Okay, automated self-checkout cashiers. Those are becoming quite popular in stores these days as well. Okay. Roshni says automatic packing machines. Okay. Sure. Those are some good examples. Okay, um, how about self-driving combines? Self-driving combines are those big farm machines that can now actually drive themselves on the farm. They don't even need an operator and they can farm by themselves. So they can harvest crop, they can plant seeds. Those are the self-driving combines, okay? All right. So we have some good uh, examples there. All right. Now, um, with this, we've covered the positives of uh, such automation. What are the negatives? Let's answer that question before we formulate our thesis. So think ahead, Chabi. So there's less jobs, less employment, which leads to what? So less employment. What does that lead to? So unemployment leads to what? Again, go back. Uh, so don't forget about your other... Um, thoughts uh, here you said automation is happening because it's cheaper so there's more profits for companies which is true keep that in mind when you're thinking about the negatives so there's less empl employment uh, so Igul says leads to more crime more po poverty possibly yeah keep thinking so more crime more poverty sure what else? Think of some other negatives that are possible. Okay, Chabi says certain health problems. I'm not sure how you're going to make that connection, but maybe. Yvonne says people leave their villages. Okay, um, I don't know if that's negative, Yvonne. So that's another concept where um, we might be able to argue that leaving a village is good or bad. We're not sure about that, so I don't know if it's, if it's a bad. Okay, Igul says obesity. Um, I think that's what maybe Chabi meant by health problems as well. So, um, sloth. Okay, 
Uh, sloth is not just an animal. So maybe some of you know this animal, the sloth. It's got those big nails, climbs very, very slowly on the tree. Uh, I've seen one in Costa Rica in real life. They're super cute and move super, super slowly, like they're in slow motion. That's a sloth. Uh, now, sloth in English doesn't just refer to the name of that animal, uh, but it's actually the situation where people are inactive. If somebody does not work, does not exercise, but sits and is sedentary, it means that they are sloth, okay? So that's the actual meaning of the word. So sloth, to be lazy, okay? It's a noun in this case. Okay. Sure, it leads people to sloth. It leads people to be lazy, okay? Um, it creates dependence on machines, yes. Okay, I'm still looking for some answers. Berendra says pollution, possible, absolutely. Okay. Any other? Uh, Preeti says illiteracy. Um, okay, uh, yeah, you're on the right track, uh, Preeti. So uh, decreased creativity, right? When we become dependent on machines, we've become less creative potentially. All right, uh, Yvonne says can lead to alcoholism and substance abuse. Okay, careful not to go too far with your thoughts, but Yvonne, yeah, you might be able to argue that in a longer essay. I don't think it's a good idea for the IELTS, but... So substance abuse, like smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, drinking a bottle of vodka, and so on. Okay. Um, and uh, I would say it leads to a greater gap in socioeconomic status. So uh, the rich become richer and the poor become poorer, right? That's one of the big arguments against automation when we really think about it. The people who are in control of these machines uh, become extremely wealthy while those who lose their jobs as a result of these machines become uh, much more impoverished. And the gap between wealthy and poor increases significantly so that's one of the big ones all right okay um so we have a lot of good thoughts now and again members the idea viewers is to come up with these quickly okay so let's uh now compose the thesis statement okay let's get to the thesis statement so write your thesis statement I'm not going to tell you to decide whether automation is good or bad. I'll leave that decision to you. Um, so just write your thesis statement. I'm going to do the same, and then we'll compare uh, what we have. Okay.
All right, so I'll give you a couple more seconds to catch up. While you do that, I'll outline the introduction. So the introduction should have a hook, a background, and the thesis. And some students are worried that that makes the introduction too long. But a good introduction is often lengthy. So students, when you're in college and university, you will learn and you will notice that the introductory paragraph of essays are often one of the longest paragraphs in the essay because you have to have a lot of clarity in the introduction. Okay, so the introduction uh, should have a hook, a background, and thesis. Um, I'm not sure where a lot of students got the idea that on the IELTS exam, the introduction needs to be short. No, there's no such rule or there's no such um, expectation. Uh, I think it just kind of started somewhere and then people just spread this idea without really knowing what they were talking about. Uh, but there is no such rule or expectation, I reiterate, that your introduction in the exam should be short. Okay, so if your introduction is as long as 70, 80 words, if it's clear and accurate, um, that's fine. Okay, the other 200 words of your essay are a couple of body paragraphs and the conclusion, that's okay. All right. Chavi says, with the rapid uh, technological advancement, the replacement of human labor in all fields has become more of an opinion. Although it's good for the economy and increases production, I disagree with this change because, um, Chabi, separate your thesis from your background, okay? The first part of your uh, thesis, uh, Chabi, is um, it's more your background. With the rapid technological advancement, the replacement of uh, human labor in all fields has become uh, more popular. That's background, period. And then although this type of development is good for the economy and increases production, I disagree with this change because, okay, so that would be your thesis. So separate clearly your background and your thesis, Chabi. Otherwise, you're on the right track, okay? All right. So I'm going to give a little bit more time. Don't try to make it too perfect, members. I'm here to help you correct. So, um, Shang Hung, the word automation includes the concept of work. So although automation can cause more pollution and poverty, I believe there are ben the benefits to society um, are uh, greater. Uh, such as fast and secure management. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean by secure management. You'd have to be very um, explanatory in your body paragraphs with that, Shang Hung. So if, if automation is fast, that's clear. But secure, I'm not sure. And management, fast management, it's a bit awkward so um, let's try that one more time shang Hung. although the work so although automation can cause more pollution and poverty i believe the benefits are greater as it leads to faster service and production as well as easy management something like that shang Hung. okay uh roshni says although some individuals ascertain that machines um, replacing people have had a negative impact resulting in poverty and um, you can't use less flexibility Roshnik, because it's not parallel grammar so poverty and um, loss of flexibility and I'll have to think about that one, Roshni. While I am of the opinion that this revolution is positive due to. 
Um, poverty and rigid. Rigid is an adjective. You need a noun there, Roshni. So you need to think of a noun for loss of flexibility. Okay, rigid is still not the right word because it's an adjective. Uh, Preeti says, although advancements of uh, mechanization have replaced human work as they are cheaper and accurate, I believe this is a cause of pollution and poverty and creates a large socioeconomic gap among people. Uh, Preeti, that's a really nice thesis. I made a couple of slight corrections to your grammar. Otherwise, very well written, Preeti. Keep working on your grammar, Preeti, because you're 90% there. Uh, correct your grammar and your sentences in your essays will score band nine, no problem. Okay. Igul says, substituting human work with machines is advantageous as it makes living easier and... Um, productive. On the other hand, it brings unemployment and division among people, which is why I think it is dangerous. Um, which is the reason I think it is dangerous. Avoid question markers in sentences, I go, especially the thesis. Okay, so avoid the word why. Uh, let's take a look at that first half, I go. So uh, makes living easier and productive. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by productive. I think you mean machines produce more, but you're modifying the word living with productive. So living easier and living productive. I don't think that's quite what you mean. Um, so living easier and work productive, something like that, and working productive. I'll have to think about how to make that a little bit better. Okay. All right. Um, so my thesis is here. Uh, think about a hook, students. So come up with a hook now. This is my thesis. The replacement of human labor by automation is beneficial for profit and convenience, but it also leads to increased poverty and pollution. For the latter reasons, I am opposed to the idea of replacing human jobs with machines. Okay. So this is my thesis. It's quite similar to Preeti's. Um, some of you went with the other side where it's positive. That's okay as well. Uh, come up with the hook. Okay, give me the hook for this. Okay, yeah, I see, I go. So you're saying it's productive for society. Again, watch your parallel grammar in your thesis statement, students. So um, try to simplify your thesis statements always uh, as much as possible and really pay attention to the uh, parallel grammar. That's very important. It's going to be much clearer for your reader when it's parallel grammar. Okay. Right, Chabi says, in today's world, the demand on production is at its highest and having satisfying results from human labor is increasingly more difficult. Okay, Chabi, not bad. I replaced a couple of words to make that a little bit more accurate. You're on the right track. Um, Chabi, don't overcomplicate your hook. You want to make sure that you have no mistakes in the hook. So yes, keep it interesting. Yes, make it a worldly fact. But at the same time, keep it as simple as possible. Sheng Hung says, nowadays, people are more often um, serviced by machines than real humans. Uh, Shang Hung, that's not bad. So most products and services that people use these days are provided by machine labor sure yeah that's a good one Chang Hung. so most products and services that people use these days are provided by machine labor yeah that'll catch your readers attention what 
Computers and machines are now giving us more products and services than humans? Is that possible? May or may not be true. It'll definitely get your reader and make them think. Okay. Preeti says jobs are the prime source of human livelihood and are now replaced by machines. Preeti, that's good as well. It's a little bit of, again, correction with the grammar. Um, Roshni says the way technology has revolutionized uh, automation of work um, is evident worldwide. Okay. Yvonne says nowadays more and more human uh, workplaces are replaced by machines and this is a dangerous tendency in society. Okay, note the corrections there, Yvonne. Um, careful, Yvonne, not to give uh, a strong opinion right away in your hook. That can be a little bit of um, a deterrent for your reader. So when a reader begins an essay, an article, a book, if the opinion on the f in the first one or two sentences is very strong, especially if the reader doesn't quite agree with it, then they might just close the book or the magazine and Put it away so you have to kind of gently lead into your argument you don't want to attack your reader with an opinion um, it's better to ease yourself into it okay so again keep it simple most products and services that people use these days are provided by machine labor Ooh, sounds like matrix all right uh, so now we go to the background background information is definition uh, plus importance. Okay, now this is where we can use our planning. And again, when you get really quick and good at this, then you'll have this mentally prepared and stored. So all that you need to do is just write it. Um, I'll show you where it comes from. Okay, so here, uh, definitions. Uh, what is a job? It's an activity that demands thinking, uh, energy, time in exchange for money. Why? So people can uh, have su their sustenance needs fulfilled. So that's the definition. And the other part of it, the definition is uh, computers are replacing people in the production and service industries. So that's what we're going to use for the background, okay? Uh, here we go. Again, just put it in your own words. That's the information that you need, all right? So historically, humans have exchanged their time and energy for money, which they can use to purchase their needs and wants. However, these days, machines have replaced millions of jobs in both the production and service sectors. Okay, and then comes my thesis. So there's my introduction. Again, we're really going step by step here, students. However, um, once you practice this, you can come up with an introduction like this in a matter of a few minutes, okay? Uh, just like what I showed you. So I'm going to read the introduction and make sure it makes sense. So most products and services that people use these days are provided by machine labor. Historically, humans have exchanged their time and energy for money, which they can use to purchase their needs and wants. However, these days, machines have replaced millions of jobs in both the production and service sectors. The replacement of human labor by automation is beneficial for profit and convenience, but it also leads to increased poverty and pollution. For the latter reasons, 
I am opposed to the idea of replacing human jobs with machines. Okay. And if I want to reduce the number of replacing, 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 I think of a synonym like exchanging. All right. So that would be your band nine introduction to this question. We're going to stop there for today, members. Tomorrow we'll finish this essay with body paragraph one, two, and the conclusion. All right. Uh, keep up the good work. I see some nice ideas. Again, work on word choice, grammar, okay? Review, revise, proofread your work often, all right? That's the way to get good at this. Okay, so uh, for everybody who's watching, if you want to join these members chat classes, click the join button beside the subscribe button. If you have questions or difficulties with that, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. And for all of our viewers, make sure to check us out on our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and g-i-e-l-t-s help.com for general. You're very welcome, Preeti, Chabi, Roshni, Aigul. Uh, hopefully I will see most of you in 30 minutes for some listening practice and strategy. You're welcome, Barendra. Bye for now. See you shortly.